plastic. We play with it, celebrate with it, store things in it, drive in it, measure with it, pay with it, click with it, push with it, keep things fresh with it, clean with it, eat with it, write with it, light with it, and most are nights with it. This material has helped man in a variety of ways. In fact, many medical and technological advances were made because of it. But plastics, specifically disposable plastics, pose a serious threat to our planet. Take a look around you. Most of the products we use are made of and packaged in plastic, a material made to last forever and designed to throw away. The plastic bags, water bottles, containers, and packages we dispose of daily are rarely recovered and recycled. Researchers estimate 50% is buried in landfills, some is remade into durable goods, and the rest remains unaccounted for, lost into the environment where it eventually flows into our oceans through watersheds and storm drains. The world produces millions of tons of plastic disposables each year. With the exception of a small amount that is incinerated, nearly every piece that was ever made still exists in some shape or form. Plastics have been designed to be strong and durable. Manufacturers combine oil, chemicals, and dyes at high temperatures to create huge molecules called polymers. Under a high-powered microscope, plastic molecules resemble long strands of cooked spaghetti, each noodle entangled with the others. These long polymer strands do not biodegrade because they are too large to be consumed by microorganisms. Since nature cannot digest this man-made material, the plastic we throw away never truly goes away. Once manufacturers have mixed their ingredients together, they shape the mixture into tiny plastic pellets, commonly called nurdles. The pellets are shipped across the globe and molded into the plastic products and packaging that surround us today. Nurdles are easily lost in the environment during this process and can be found floating in every ocean of the world today. But how are other plastics lost into the environment? Plastic falls from garbage trucks. It spills out of overfilled trash cans. It is tossed carelessly. It flies, floats, and has a life of its own. Once trash is lost, wind and water transport it downhill through streets and storm drains into the ocean. Wildlife in the watershed, on the beaches, and in the sea are highly affected by the plastic debris. Many animals mistakenly eat it, causing them to choke to death. Some eat so much plastic, their stomachs no longer have room for real food, leading to starvation. Others become entangled in it and cannot survive its persistent, long-lasting durability. Scientists have discovered that plastic goes deep into the marine ecosystem. Some of it floats on top of the water, while others go deep at various levels. Once floating plastic leaves land, surface currents can transport it to one of the oceanic gyres, massive, slow-rotating whirlpools that draw in debris. Over time, UV rays from the sun weaken the plastic through a process called photodegradation. Recognizable items like bottles and containers will crumble into plastic bits. Scientists call these bits microplastics, which are found to adsorb toxic chemicals. Contaminated microplastics mix with plankton to create a sort of plastic soup. Wildlife eats the soup, taking in all the chemicals within the plastics. Scientists are currently researching the effects of toxic chemicals that may be bioaccumulating up the food chain. Today, researchers continue to uncover how extensive the problem is. Algalita scientists sail through the accumulation areas collecting samples with a special net made of a very fine mesh called a mantitrol. It can capture debris as small as one-third of a millimeter. The surface samples are taken to the Algalita Laboratory, where biologists work to understand the impact this plastic soup has on the marine ecosystem. To date, Algalita has found plastic in every oceanic giant. They have also confirmed that wildlife is ingesting the plastic. The record holder in their 2008 fish study had over 84 plastic fragments in its stomach. Even students have taken research into their own hands by studying their local beaches and waterways. We now understand that it is impractical to remove these tiny bits from our immense ocean, so we must stop these plastics from entering in the first place. This is an environmental issue we can see with our own eyes, but what can we do to change it? Start by noticing disposables and talk about what you see around you. Also, remember the five R's. Refuse disposables by bringing your own bag, bottle, container, straw, and utensils. 
Reduce the amount entering our environment by reducing consumption. Reuse items that are commonly considered disposables. Turn trash into treasures or works of art to raise awareness of plastic pollution. Although the vast majority of disposables are not recovered, do your best to recycle what you can't refuse. And lastly, major solutions will come through redesign. Inventions like stainless steel water bottles and reusable grocery bags have moved us closer to a sustainable society free of plastic pollution. The fact of the matter is, young people are already making a difference. But people are still unaware of the plastic problem. Share what you know with others so together we can find a solution to plastic pollution.